Hey everybody, it's Lex and Riot, and uh, we're here to explain ourselves about uh, this trailer axle situation that we left as kind of a cliffhanger in our last video. Today I'm also going to share some of the pros and cons of having torsion axles, and I'm going to share with you some of the most intense on-the-road repair stories that you guys shared with me on the last community post sun is blinding. All right, so basically what happened was about a week and a half ago, I was moving camp and going to a spot someone referred me to that I hadn't been there, you know, before. Um, and the road started pretty typical for a forest road, but about a half mile in, it got pretty narrow, um, really covered in sagebrush and um, spotted with boulders. Now, naturally, I didn't film the drive in, one, because I wasn't anticipating having a problem, and two, I generally am trying to concentrate, especially in new areas that are dicey like that. Um, I guess it wouldn't have made a difference anyway <laughs> under the circumstances, but since I didn't film what happened, um, very well um, and I didn't film much after because all due respect I wasn't really in the mood to film once I realized that I jacked my trailer up um, I, I did create this uh, I did create this origami truck and trailer so that I can at least do a proper reenactment for you or somewhat proper reenactment for today's reenactment I have I have recreated this is the highway. This is the beginning of the forest road and it's going to come around to where I should have stopped and then it's going to come and you can see the switchback and the buckle of the leash over here is um, where the camp spot was that I was going to. So basically as I turned off the highway everything was pretty good and I was traveling this forest road. It wasn't as windy that day as it is today. Now I got to this little spot and I said to myself, oh, you should just stop here. This is perfect. It's level and it's huge. But no, I decided to continue down this really scrawny forest road. And then the switchback started. And when the switchback started, I started getting nervous. And my gut was saying, man, you shouldn't have come up here. And there was nowhere to turn around, of course. So the thing is, is when you're towing, the trailer follows pretty close, but not perfectly. So, you know, as I'm going around these little narrow switchbacks, everything's all right, but there's these boulders that are starting. And I'm able to navigate the front, you know, the truck through the boulders, but because the turns were tight enough, the trailer, you know, moved out kind of like when you're a right hand turn and, um, you know, around a curb. And so I just clipped my tire on the rack and I even heard it, the whole rig jarred. But then I was able to move forward, so I kind of went, oh, I don't know. But basically what I did is I, I got the wheel stuck and I, I bent the arm of the axle. So when I got up to the so when I got up to the top by camp and I got out and I inspected it, ugh, it was it was screwed up. I hope you enjoyed that terrible reenactment. Once I got out and did a walk around, I saw that the front right tire of the trailer was at a significant bend and it was rubbing against the trailer body. Um, it didn't rub a lot of rubber away from the tire. The tire was actually okay. The wheel was okay. Um, it's just the axle arm was bent and it took some of the um, powder coating, the white paint off the aluminum and the aluminum was getting exposed. Basically, I knew that I had I had done a bad, bad thing. Um, so my first instinct though, nonetheless, was to kind of deny that it was an issue. And I wanted to just kind of pretend that everything was fine. But, you know, as I looked closer, it was so obvious that the axle arm was bent and that it wasn't drivable like that. Otherwise it would wear away at the rubber and I'd probably explode the tire at some point. Um, and I wanted to obviously keep the tire. The last thing I needed was like a bent rim and a bum tire. So um, basically what I did was I didn't want to jack up the trailer by myself. Um, and so I just used a little, my little shovel and I dug under the tire because we were on a dirt road um, to give me enough room to remove the tire. And then I just limped my way um, down is about two miles. I was about two miles from pavement. So I just, you know, took it slow, really avoided that boulder on the way back down. 
um, so I didn't jack up the other side of the trailer and uh, got myself back down to the highway. You know, I really got to be thankful to God that I got the tandem axle um, just in case this very situation happened. Not that you ever want to have to rely on, you know, that type of wisdom. But um, because if I had just a single axle, I probably wouldn't have been able to get the two miles back down the forest road to get to concrete where someone could come help me. So when I got back down uh, to where the entrance to the forest road was, which was like right on the highway, um, I called a couple mechanics and I called AAA. Um, I, one of the mechanics uh, offered to come out to take a look just to let me know whether or not I could drive it on the other axle as far as I needed to to get it to a repair shop or to see if he could help me right then and there. Maybe it wasn't as big of a deal as I thought. You know, I'm definitely um, under no pretenses that I'm mechanically inclined at all. So, you know, I, was, I'm, I, I probably get ripped off at some point because, you know, I uh, am very clear on my ignorance. And people can take advantage of you for that. But at any rate, this guy came out and he was really, really nice. AAA had a hell of a time finding someone willing to come get me. Um, and they never did for that matter. So AAA was unfortunately not useful at all to me that day. Um, but thankfully this mechanic came out, he looked at it, he basically said, yeah, you're pretty well effed on this axle because with it being a torsion axle, once that arm is bent, it, you kind of have to replace the entire axle. And we'll get into that here in a little bit as I talk about torsion axles. Um, but he said, because you have two 3,500 pound axles and your trailer's not that heavy, you can definitely get it down to, you know, one of the mechanics um, in order to get it fixed on just the one axle, you should be fine. And he said the other axle looked like it wasn't harmed at all, which is great. So this nice mechanic, I did pay him a little bit of money, but he um, followed behind me as I limped the trailer about 30 miles to the nearest town that had um, a couple repair shops. So he, I, I took it slow, even though the axle was fine. It's just, you know, you got to operate within your comfort zone. But this guy was super nice and he followed me the entire way there with his blinkers on just to make sure I got there safely. Unfortunately, his shop does not um, deal with axles, doesn't deal with my issue. He was well versed in it, but he works for someone else. So he's like, I wish I had time on the side. I would help you out. But Anyway, he referred me to someone else, um, so he followed me all the way to that mechanic shop, um, which I really appreciate because he really didn't have to do that. And I did throw him some bones for it, but it's not like he required it. You know, people are just good. That's kind of the message there. So the shop that um, I was brought to was pretty busy. Um, you know, you can't help but feel like you're annoying people when you show up spontaneously with a problem. Um, but they were really nice and they were accommodating and, um, you know, they told me to just chill for a little bit, a few hours, and they had someone out to come and inspect and confirmed. I didn't bend the whole axle, but I did bend the arm. And, you know, when you bend the arm on a torsion axle, you pretty much are set to replace the entire thing. So they said, hang tight, we're gonna investigate what it's gonna take to find you a new axle. And um, this is kind of where the fun really started. <laughs> So basically, no one typically carries torsion axles. They're, they're not just accessible like spring axles are, which is one of the reasons you commonly see spring axles on most trailers, um, is partly because of this very issue. It's um, not the easiest when it comes down to repairs. Um, typically, torsion axles are made to order as they have a variety of specified applications. Um, this limitation in accessing them for quick repairs is, I think, really the main reason that spring axles would be beneficial for a lot of folks. So kind of back on track to this very issue, um, the, the parts guy comes back and tells me it's going to be about six to eight weeks for them to be able to get a, a new torsion axle in my size over here. And I go, hey, if I call around, is that all right? You know, and he's like, of course, go for it. So I call around to all the other repair shops, but they give me the same answer. And I called um, even to someone far away. And then my friend Robert, you know, I, I mentioned to him, oh, I'm having a little issue here. Um, and he even asked a shop in Utah where he was um, or is, 
if if they had one, same answer, six to eight weeks, um, because they're basically again made to fit. So I'm like, well, shit. It, you know, it's a little panic-inducing to hear that you're going to be laid up for six to eight weeks, especially when it's not anywhere that you plan to be. And six to eight weeks is just a really long time when this is your house. I mean, this is my only house, you know what I mean? So that was a little panic inducing, but all you can control is what you can control. So, you know, my next thought was, okay, well, I'll call Colorado Trailers, uh, who I bought the trailer through, but I knew that they wouldn't have any axles on hand because Colorado Trailers doesn't manufacture the trailer. They design the trailer and they have it made for them and then they deal the trailer. They're a dealership, you know? So <clears throat> I called them just in hopes that they could refer me to someone that could fix or help me get a fix earlier, you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, no surprise, they were like, yeah, we don't, we don't have anything like that here, but here's who you can call. And they referred me to the manufacturer of the trailer, which is Cargo Craft down in Texas. So I called the person at Cargo Craft who deals with Colorado trailers and, oh, he graciously agreed to dig around the facility um, to see if they had an axle that they were able and willing to spare um, that would fit my very vehicle. And I gave them the VIN number, you know, just so that we uh, had exactly what I needed um, because yes, I was feeling a little uptight and paranoid because <laughs> the last thing you want is like the wrong size to be sent to you or something like that. Um, but he told me it would take him a day or so for him to um, go investigate the warehouse area. So, you know, all you can do is have a restless night and pray that you get a good answer in the morning. That wait to be called back by the guy at Cargo Craft was um, kind of, you know, hellish, but it gave me the opportunity to make a few plans in case I did end up here for six to eight weeks so that I at least had a trajectory through the situation if I really had to. Um, if you're wondering, plan A was to plead to one of the mobile home parks to let me in or one of the RV parks. Um, a lot of them in this area due to the season only allow people a seven day stay. So I would have had to plead and beg. Um, also one of the limitations of having a cargo trailer instead of a traditional RV is that a lot of RV parks or mobile homes won't admit you because, um, they don't see it as an RV. They don't see it. They might give you a tent site, but like the uh, mobile home park here even says on their website that if you have one of their tent sites, you have to, you have to sleep in a tent overnight, no exceptions. So I was kind of like, man, this is going to be a raw deal. Um, but that was plan A if I had to. Plan B was to just find boondocking spots for the next six to eight weeks. Um, there's certainly enough in this area within, let's say, a 50 mile radius, but that would be a lot of towing. Even though I can tow on the one axle, it's just not in my comfort zone under the circumstances, you know, when you're just kind of feeling a little vulnerable anyway. Um, I just didn't want to have to do that if I could help it. Um, but there are a lot of boondocking spots around, thank God. And then plan C was to just leave the trailer with the mechanics and um, just take the truck and I keep a tent with me um, from back in the day when I just stayed in the truck. I just don't have the truck built out for camping anymore. So, you know, it wasn't an ideal solution and it kind of has me thinking maybe I should rebuild out the truck for in case this ever happens again. So I am thinking about doing that, um, but hopefully I just don't screw up my trailer again. <laughs> That's also a nice plan, but you know, anyway. Um, so those were my A, B, and C in case I did have to wait. But lucky, lucky, lucky me, um, JR, the guy at Cargo Craft, called me back the next day and he said that he had an axle that he could sell me. I, the axle is under warranty, but not if you screw it up. You know what I mean? It's not a failure of the product, it's a failure of the user. So, you know, at first he was kind of questioning me, thinking maybe that I was gonna try and get it warrantied. And I was like, no man, I just wanna buy it. I need to get out of here. <laughs> Cause it's getting hot and we're in rattlesnake country and I really wanna be out of rattlesnake country now that they're out of um, hibernation. So little girl also has like no freedom while we're here. Anyway, I didn't explain all this to JR. I was just like, take my money, give me the axle kind of a thing, you know? And he was real cordial, you know, proper Southern gentleman about it and real empathetic to my situation. So thank you to JR at Cargo Craft. Your customer service was excellent. Um, <clears throat> 
anywho, so uh, I'm, I'm real thankful for that. And, you know, while waiting on an axle for two weeks because it's taking, you know, poor Texas is getting pummeled with weather right now. So it is taking a little bit to get the axle here, but two week, a, a two week wait is so much better than a six to eight week wait. So I feel really blessed. And, you know, I feel like there's so many, you know, bad things happen, but then you get all these affirmations that people are really good. You know what I mean? At their core. I think, you know, there's two ways you can see the world. Either people are inherently flawed and, you know, uh, their animal body is what really possesses them. Or, you know, you see, you see the goodness in them as their essential core. And I am definitely the type of person that sees goodness in people as their essential core. And situations like this are just so affirming to that. You, know, you get the goodness out of so many people. Anyway, so I'm still waiting on the axle. Um, we're still in axle limbo. Um, so I think I'll feel a hell of a lot better once I get the call that the axle is delivered and everything's good and it arrived okay and it's the right size, even though I trust JR that he sent me the right size and when he took the VIN and everything. Um, but you know, I'll, I'll feel better. It should be here in a few days and hopefully by the time I make my next video, everything's all repaired. So <clears throat> speaking of the goodness of other people and waiting on the mechanic, these mechanics over here, you know, I mentioned that they were real nice and accommodating. And when I mentioned to them that I live in the trailer full time, they were a little surprised. And, um, you know, I was like, they, they couldn't have me stay on their lot, which I understand that's a huge liability. Um, but they actually referred me to the BLM camping spot that I'm at right now. And it's very, very close to their shop. So I'm really thankful because they did me a solid. They also let me fill up all my waters. Um, so I had just gotten food not that long ago. So I literally am prepared to be out here for up to like 18 days. So the two weeks is fine. I don't even have to move the trailer um, at all. I don't even have to unhitch because if I'm going to be totally honest, while I know the other axle is fine and um, in a in an objective reality, I know everything is fine. Um, <laughs> subjectively, I just feel more comfortable sitting, you know, like a scared squirrel, frozen. <laughs> Fight, flight, or freeze. I'm currently in freeze a little bit yet. So, you know, it's just one of those things. So I am really thankful they let me fill my waters and referred me to a boondocking spot so close so I didn't have to drive it much farther. And that's where I've been for the last, uh, how long? I guess like 11 days. <laughs> so that's where we're at with the whole um, broken axle situation. I'm basically in axle delivery limbo, uh, but I've been very productive while here with um, work. I've gotten several projects done for my job um, and I've cleaned the trailer. I don't know if you guys are familiar. I loved, loved, loved this book when I was a little kid. My grandma used to read it to me all the time and it's called The House That Had Enough. And it was, I think my favorite book that my grandma would read me and it was basically this house that this little girl didn't maintain well enough. And so it said, I'm, I'm done with it. And all her stuff left her uh, because she wasn't respectful to it. She didn't care for it. She didn't clean it. She didn't maintain it. And so she had to learn a, a good lesson that, you know, things will leave your life if you don't appreciate them and maintain them. So I cleaned my whole trailer because I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it think I don't want it leaving me. You know what I mean? Anyway, I don't know if any if any of you read that book as a kid. Um, let me know because it's out of print, um, and this is really going to date me probably that it was one of my favorite childhood books. But at any rate, so I've been occupying my time with a lot of that. All right. In the next video, I share a little bit more about the camp spot that we're at. But I'm not trying to totally dox myself, even though I know a lot of you probably already have figured out kind of where I'm at, please don't dox me in the comments. I'd really appreciate that. Um, but for now, kind of what I want to do is um, share a few things about torsion axles for those that might not know but are curious. Um, you know, torsion axles aren't that common on trailers as spring axles are. And, you know, I don't pretend to be an expert by any regard. Um, but between the research I did when I was buying the trailer and then the forced experience that I'm going through now that has led to... Um, some research, I do have some knowledge that I think would be worthwhile to share for some folks. So from my research, both um, spring and torsion axles have a record of reliability in different applications. 
The reason I went with torsion axles is because they require very little maintenance. They function uh, with a compression of inner rubber cords, which mean they offer a much smoother ride, so my stuff isn't being thrown around as much. And they're particularly advantageous on rough and bumpy surfaces, which is what I drive on the most of the time, except for when I'm on the highway going to the next bumpy surface. So for my use, they just made sense. There are several downsides to torsion axles though. Initially, they're more expensive to buy than spring suspensions, and and they're definitely more expensive to repair because <laughs> if if a part is damaged on it you kind of have to replace the whole thing like for instance I can't just re-bend the arm back or the integrity of the metal will be compromised um, the other major issue with torsion axles which is so apparent right now is that most repair facilities don't stock torsion axles so you often have to have them made to order kind of like I was talking about before which is why everyone told me the six to eight week wait period um, which really sucks <laughs> So it's something to definitely be aware of if you have torsion axles to the point where I'm thinking once I kind of bounce back from this and maybe I'm in an area long enough to have another delivered it's a lot of weight to carry around but I might order one just to have on hand if God forbid this ever happens again kind of like having a spare tire um, only tires are really easy to come by if that would ever happen but I'm, I'm almost thinking about just carrying a spare for a just in case this ever happens again All right and the final not the greatest thing about torsion axles is that there's no impact distribution so if you hit a curb or in my case like a big boulder rock or part of the rack the full impact is on the wheel or the set of wheels which is how you can bend an arm just like i did um, now i have dexter axles which seem very reputable and i don't of course fault the axle at all for me running the tire into a rack from my research i have no doubt that the new dexter axle won't fail for many many years provided I wise up in my driving. <laughs> For my particular application and use and lifestyle, I think the torsion axles are the right choice for me, but maybe spring would be better, I don't know. But I'm fixing it with another torsion axle. I have seen uh, on the internet in particular where torsion versus spring axle debate is a bit like Ford versus Chevy. So it will be very exciting and interesting to read the comment section on this one. Um, and if you have opinions, of course, please leave them below. I think it's good for all of us to have a bigger and broader comprehension on this stuff. All right, to round out this repairs on the road video, I asked you guys uh, what your most intense on the road repair um, experience has been. Um, and so many of you had some seriously stunning stories. There were 70 responses to the question on the last community post. Um, so I'm gonna share with you a few of what I thought were really outstanding stories. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell, but it was getting really hot out there. It's actually cooler in the trailer. Um, okay, so here we go. All right, the first story is from Duddy's Adventure. He says, I, or she says, he or she. Are you a he or she? Sorry. Um, I had the front driver's side wheel come off on a three quarter ton Chevy truck when doing a U turn under an overpass. Luckily, I was going under 30 miles per hour when it happened, but I white knuckled the steering wheel until I came to a stop. <laughs> I think having a wheel or a tire come off in, in motion is horrifying. I'm glad you made it through. As the crone fly wrote, many years ago, we blew the engine on a truck. We spent a week in Cornwall, Kentucky, waiting for a rebuilt engine to be shipped and installed. The shop let us park the horse trailer with horses out back on a small patch of grass. Good times. Again, horrifying. No one wants that experience, but isn't that nice that you were able to park your horses? I mean, sometimes it's like, hey, at least that was good. Um, John M. says, a couple years ago, I was driving home from a meditation retreat, and suddenly the car lost power steering and a couple other things. He managed to get off the road to a local repair shop. Whew! I mean, hopefully you were at least zenned out from the meditation retreat, so it wasn't quite so stressful. I mean, I guess that's the benefit there. Yikes. Hell Scout Act says oil pump went out 300 miles from parts junkyard on Alcon Highway. Hitched a ride both ways, found a used oil pump off another 318 Dodge truck. Swapped it out, got back on the road four days later. Continued my trip to Fairbanks, Alaska. 
picked up another one for the trip back. That was a great trip. It was back in 1979. You know, in the moment, sounds like hell. As a memory, sounds like a pretty awesome trip with a good memory. You know what I mean? That's what I'm hoping this turns into. Oh, Matt Olson, worst breakdown was driving during Thanksgiving weekend and having the transmission fail on a three lane and trying to cruise across two lanes without any engagement from transmission, all while people honking their horn and uh, flashing bright lights at me. I made it to the shoulder of the interstate and sat there for hours before getting a tow truck. Fun times. <sighs> to be honest with you, that's one of the reasons I always, always, always drive in the right lane. I mean, it's very rare that you'll catch me in one of the faster lanes. I also drive like 55 all the time. So I am the person that you're probably pissed at uh, in the right lane. Sorry, but it's my comfort zone towing. All right, and last one that I'll share with you, but again, there were 70 responses. So if you're interested, go to my community page and um, uh, you can read all these incredible stories. Um, <clears throat> this last one is Fishing, Gaming, and Guitars, uh, who says, I was driving down the highway 55 miles per hour, this was in the old days, and my right tie rod end went out. So front tire basically just flopped over to about 45 degree angle as I careened to a stop. I walked in the rain to call someone, <laughs> cell phones weren't invented yet, and sat in the rain on the side of the highway and fixed it. Cars just blazing by the whole time. That sucked. <laughs> they continue on. I had an old Pontiac Firebird and we were headed from Las Vegas down to Boulder City and the engine blew. Oh man, you've had a couple doozies. We just left it on the side of the highway, like literally left it. We walked to the store and called my sister for a ride and never went back to it. Oh, so you're one of those people that ditched it. I always wonder about that because like, don't they find you from your VIN or your license plates or anything like that? But it happens, so interesting. So I mean, I know I'm not alone in having repair issues on the road. I know it happens to everyone. Um, which is why I really appreciate you guys sharing those stories. And, you know, the cool thing is, is that all these people live to tell the tale. And I think that's the biggest takeaway. I mean, some of them even seem like fun memories now that you can look back on them, of course, right? In the moment, sometimes it's quite a drag. I definitely felt that the first few days, um, <laughs> of this adventure. Um, but I've had my own adventures on the road. Um, I've had um, my diesel exhaust filter crack and had to have that replaced on my first day out. I've, I've told this story, I think, before. Um, it's a $4,300 fix and you can do a emissions delete, but you can't get away with that in every state. And I was currently registered in Wisconsin and that was not permissible. And I only made it from Wisconsin to Minnesota. I had that fix in Minneapolis. And then down in New Mexico, I had the low pressure fuel pump go out. Um, and I had to get towed from about tr a little south of Truth or Consequences down to La Cruces to have that fixed. And I had to wait on the dealership lot for like uh, eight days until they could get the part in. And I know some people are worried about the high pressure fuel pump in these trucks. And the thing is, is before I ever got the truck, the entire fuel system was already rebuilt. I imagine it's because of that very issue. Um, so I talked to the mechanic here because they specialize in diesels. And she said, it's a crapshoot, but because my system had already been rebuilt, um, and I had that from the Carfax report, um, that she she says that she shouldn't worry about it, but I am looking into the S and S uh, bypass kit. If any of you have done that on your diesels, will you please leave it in the comments below? Um, I'm looking to maybe have that done up in Oregon this summer, um, but otherwise, you know, it is what it is. But since this truck has already been through a rebuild, um, it's done me good so far. I've put almost thirty thousand miles on it. And I've only had those two issues. She's been very reliable otherwise, and I love her dearly. Um, so hopefully no issues, but feel free to um, leave me in the comments below if you've already been through that or if you've done the uh, bypass kit. The point of that is I've already been through, you know, a few things. Um, I feel like this issue with the trailer is my third because you know how they say that, you know, things 
happen in threes? Well, over the past two years, this is my third thing. So I feel like maybe I'm done for a while. Hopefully, God willing. Um, stuff happens and I think how you get through it and your attitude through it is really what matters. And so again, I thank you guys for sharing all those stories of your on the road repairs so that you can, uh, we can show people that, you know, truly how you get through it is what matters. So I hope you choose to be a Pollyanna about whatever your broken axle situation in your life might be right now. Um, I think there's a lot to be glad for. Sometimes you just have to look for it. In the next video, hopefully we're rolling again and perhaps I'll get to the insurance video uh, for that one, uh, for the next one. Um, if you're wondering, I did not file a claim on this um, as is, this will not end up costing me enough to mess with insurance. That would have just been a bigger hassle and I don't think it would have even met my deductible. So this is just an out-of-pocket expense. Um, if you're interested, maybe I'll share that. I don't really like sharing financial things as much because um, for one, everyone's different. And for two, that seems to be super taboo on the internet, even though it's helpful to a lot of people. But if you're wondering, it's less than $1,000 so far. So, um, you know, that's why you want to have that emergency fund. It's so, so crucial because uh, you never know when unanticipated rocks are going to jump out underneath your tire, right? Because that rock came for me. I didn't come for it, of course, right? Oh, that's such bullshit. Anyway, Riot's on the floor. Otherwise, I'd have her come up here. I'll put in some B-roll of her <laughs> to satisfy you because I know most of you are here for her and not me. Um, but Riot and I are super glad that um, you watched this video, especially this far into it because I know it's a little long. Um, so I sincerely want to thank you for that. Um, if you did find the information today helpful, I would appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. It really helps our analytics so that our joy comes around to more people that might benefit from it. Um, and consider subscribing because I do F up a lot and that can be very useful information to many of you um, before you make the same mistakes. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.